Hey, good day, everyone. I think we're live. September 19th, 2024, and Richard's monkeying around with his camera. Outstanding. We're off to a great start. Uh, <laughs> I, I didn't touch it. What happened? I, oh, I don't know. It just kind of flashed. You went off and on. I didn't know. It said you joined the room. I don't yeah, know. I okay, there's probably a gremlin in the uh, in the works. Excellent. Uh, I got still some people rolling in. So while they're rolling in, why don't I just go ahead here and I'll, uh, let everyone know the topic of today's chat, fireside chat. Slowly then suddenly, should you be long Bitcoin? And this is going to be quite interesting because uh, you know, Richard's going to dispense some Wisdom. Ramble on. Yeah. His his thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Probably good for some contemplation and maybe even a few laughs. <laughs> You'd be laughing at me, not with me. <laughs> Same thing. Uh, yeah, so it's uh, it's kind of interesting. And, and this is this slowly suddenly thing is sort of the way I think major events tend to unfold in general, whether it's a financial event or otherwise. And people have this. Uh, I don't know the word for it. Uh, maybe I do, but I can't think of it. This way of knowing something's coming, but just kind of uh, probably not during my lifetime or, oh, probably not this month, or they just get used to it. And all of a sudden when it happens, it's like, oh, my God, a shock. It's like, you know, you have a loved one that maybe, you you know, you know is going to pass or like when my grandfather was was dying, you, you know he's going to die. It could be any time now and, and you, you've prepared for it. Where it actually happens, it still kind of gives you a bit of a kick in the stomach, and mm. and uh, I think that's the way a lot of these things tend to to unfold. Let me just uh, I'm going to stop sharing this because I don't need that up. Uh, but first, uh, let's just uh, this is a good time to remind you if you want to join us over at RogueTrader.academy, please do so, or check out our Patreon at Rogue Trader Patreon Rogue Trader Academy, and we do live streams. Most every weekday, although I didn't do one yesterday because it was pre-Fed announcement and there's no point to do anything before that, which we'll also talk on. And, uh, yeah, join us uh, for live streams and uh, live trade alerts and general uh, musings about the market and life and politics and everything else you probably disagree with us about. All right. So what do I want to talk about? So let me share my screen. Let's just get a lay of the land. Oh, you just, uh, uh, yeah, you just left the room and came back. Uh, momentarily, well, did, did I and look? It, my my picture's gone all yellowy for a second. Yeah, I think right? this webinar jam thing is uh, is playing up, but uh, I think we're still here. Yeah, I think. So. Anyway, you're going to stop it, rambling it, on and get on with it. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. And if we're not here, please just let us know in the chat. Whoa, sixty-two eight. What? Sixty-two thousand eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, it's pushing up, isn't it? It's pushing yeah. up. Uh, so you can see my screen, right? Yeah, I've got, it's taking me from having to manage puts to managing calls. It's <laughs> boring. <laughs> You're like, please let me plunge. You know, manage calls. Uh, and one, then it's like, one, one, manage one Friday, I'd love stuff just to go out worthless on both sides, just to give me an easy time. <laughs> what is this nonsense you talk about? You know, one thing I was thinking, you know, so this day in history, September 19th, is interesting. It, too bad it wasn't September 17th, because Richard and I actually share the same birthday hmm. on September 17th, which is sort of a Happy coincidence, not that anyone cares. Uh, but September 19th, did you know, just before I get started, I read this. It was New Zealand was the first comp country to have women vote. And, you know, I was just curiously noticing that's probably just coincidental that the world started going downhill from there. <laughs> I'm just joking, all you girls. I'm just joking, of course. All right, here's the Bitcoin chart. Uh, yeah, hey, a nice move up, you know, and we're, we've come right that, into that. This. Reminds me of a, a great Mel McDonald uh, joke. <laughs> okay, like, okay, go ahead. Where he goes, you know, he tells that sexist joke, and then he says, "No, I'm just, you know, it might surprise you to learn that that joke was written by a woman." <laughs> and then he goes, "No, no, just kidding. You we don't hire women right here." <laughs> <laughs> Norm McDonald was brilliant. I, I love that guy. He was, he was just so deadpan and so wonderful. Yeah, died far too young. Uh, okay, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, look, we've got this zone that this this bar has been here for freaking ages. Uh, it's gonna, it's we're we're going to touch sixty three on this call. It looks like it. We're we're only forty bucks away from it, so that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, that's insane. Yeah. And last week I started a long gamma account for us. So for those that follow us on Rogue Trader Academy, 
uh, there, there's your 63 right there, um, where I'm doing long iron condors, and that's all I'm doing, except when I close them and market gets overextended, I'll switch to short gamma. But anyways, I, I digress a little bit. So basically, you know, we were thinking this is no man's land. It did stop here. Uh, and it's not that surprising, but I expected to get some resistance here. If it wants to push up to 64, something redonkulous, you can bet I'll be selling some short dated calls, probably at the money or near the money. Um, or, you know, if you want to feel a bit more timid, you know, the 67s will probably be worth uh, some good bucks. You know, maybe next Friday, that might be a good bet too. But again, not trading advice. That's just what I'll be doing. And if I get hammered by it, you'll know it and I'll just adjust it. Um, if you make money, please send me ten percent of the proceeds. <laughs> I just I was just looking at the liquidation heat map. Um, uh, I think people were preempting this and sold a yep. bunch of risk at uh, what sixty three, which is just all being taken out now. By yep, there you uh, can see it right now on my screen. Uh, and I was going to mention the heat map because I'd seen quite a bit building up at sixty one, and I actually mm. just bought some puts as well. I, well, of course, I did the the long iron condor strategy. Uh, for, for the gamma because they were getting really cheap. And I think that you're right that the risk, uh, the the fear of the downside risk has much abated right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're down to 3% risk of results at 10, 10 Delta now in one week. Mm -hmm. And it, one other quick thing I'll mention here be, before we get onto the topic is, you know, okay, yesterday we had a little bit of outflows uh, in Bitcoin ETFs, but geez, we had, you know, four days straight of, of positive inflows. Mm. And then, uh, you know, uh, six of the last seven days were, were positive, which is, you know, kind of nice because it broke the previous pattern of, of that negativity. But interestingly, no, no BlackRock inflows, um, which I, I kind of think of as the steady, the, the, the one that's the underlying sentiment, whereas the other ones tend to be, in my view, speculative in that the people are using them to hedge yeah. micro, micro strategy or, or whatever. Um, yeah, interestingly, it was just on Monday that I had those inflows or BlackRock had those mm, inflows yeah. uh, and everything is zero. And I think we've often questioned, is that zero really accurate? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Look at that 63,200. Oh my uh, God. So, you listen, know, I sold my 62,000 long calls this morning because I want to lock in some profit. No problem. You, you can't go broke taking a profit. Yada, yada, yada. But I said, well, this week and now going forward, I'm going to double my previous position so I can sell into strength and I can hold the rest for a big move. So I'm I'm quite happy. I think I bought 64 is now my new strike for next Friday. 64, 68 is the spread. So, yeah. Uh, what else do I want to say about this? I don't think that's um, – I think that's all I wanted to mention about that. Let me turn my machine screen machine share screen share off all right so back to the topic uh slowly then suddenly and and before the call we were chatting a little bit about the markets uh we're talking a lot about oil uh, i am long oil and of course if you're a member of rope Trade academy you would know that uh and i think you've got some some of your own thoughts you'd like to sort of mention as part of the slowly then suddenly so i'm just going to sort of hand the floor over to you and, and you can sort of chat yeah i was um Thinking about the Middle East, I mean, given the recent events in the Middle East, but also previous to, to that, um, and the whole petrodollar thing, um, you know, the, the the alternative news networks are full of, or have always been full of, you know, the, the whole petrodollar dollars a scam and 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 you know, the US have hegemony and all that. But actually, um, there's been a kind of a change in in the US's position over the past, I guess, twenty years, but more recently, ten years, in that it's definitely become less interested in interfering in the world or policing the world, depending on your point of view. Um, and uh, it's worth mentioning that the, the the probable reason for that is that the US, because of fracking and shale oil, has become self-sufficient in oil. Now, you wouldn't know that if you hear all the you know people uh, deriding Biden for running down the strategic oil reserves and so on. But there's there's a there's a there's a shit ton of oil under under the U.S. more than it needs, and in fact the U.S. is now an oil exporter, which means it no longer has a a strong vested interest in defending its interests in the Middle East, particularly Saudi Arabia, which used to be its 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 uh, top sort of top up oil tap, um, <clears throat> and that means a number of things. It means that the U.S. sort of no longer is so interested in policing the seas. 
because um, it doesn't depend on them so, quite so much as it did. <clears throat> um, the, the US is also interestingly looking to move manufacturing back onshore as a security measure, um, which also means that it's less interested in policing the seas. Um, and that means that countries like Saudi Arabia need to find a, 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 another protector. Um, so you've seen in the news, news maybe that Saudi Arabia has been sort of cozying up to China um, and interestingly selling oil for yen, uh, sorry, oil for uh, yuan. Um, um, which 10 years ago would have probably got it carpet bombed, right? Um, and let's not beat around the bush. That's, that's the, the reality of the, of the hege hegemony and the petrodollar. But so, you know, in return for protection from the US, you you grant the, the US fealty uh, and, your, and your oil. This is not um, like jailhouse politics, basically. Yeah, well, I mean, that's just, I mean, politics is politics, right? It's mm -hmm. who, who, who controls the stuff. Um, so, uh, so the, the, and you know, if you again, you look at social media, you'll see people saying, uh, "This shows how weak the US is because it no longer, um, you know, can control its its uh, protectorates." But the real the reality is that the US, I think, is less interested in controlling where mm. um, Saudi Arabia sells its oil, and therefore Saudi Arabia can, in quotes, get away with it. But this then leads on to another question about the the who needs dollars. Um, because of course, American people always need dollars, and countries whose currencies are pegged to the dollar need dollars, um, such as uh, um, Argentina uh, now, by the way. Um, uh, and the Middle Eastern currencies are all still pegged to the dollar. But if people don't need to buy dollars to buy those those uh, that oil, then arguably the demand for dollars will gradually decrease. Now. I don't see any any reason that people stop demanding dollars overnight by any means because you know we've got USDT, USDC in crypto just because it's so convenient, right? And everything's dollar based. But we are definitely moving into a multipolar world, and these these seismic shifts, as per the title, happen slowly and then they happen quickly. Um, so uh, for that reason, um, I'm very happy to be long, uh, shall we say, currency neutral assets. Um, and if you've watched the show before, you'll know that I'm always long gold and own physical gold and don't trust paper gold for a moment, uh, don't own any of it. Um, uh, and I see Bitcoin as a much more erratic short term version of gold. I mean, I know that the, in the cryptocurrency world, Bitcoin is seen as you know electronic gold, end of story. Um, I see it as as a proxy for gold with a short shelf life. Uh, by short, that could be five, ten, twenty years. Or who knows? Who knows, right? But but for now, it's a it's a sort of a high beta proxy for both gold and excess liquidity. Um, so I, I would therefore expect positive sentiment going forward on on Bitcoin, and therefore it's going to be a horribly volatile, of course. In my view, crawl up for the time being, um, uh, and it, it probably doesn't matter whether I'm right or wrong about the long term. My mm. long term view on Bitcoin is 20 years' time, it's worth zero, right? But um, uh, because central banks don't want Bitcoin, they want gold, and, and as evidenced by last year and this year, have been record years for central banks buying gold. Um, uh, but whether I'm right or wrong doesn't matter because the short term, the long term doesn't matter to anyone really because we're all dead in the long in the long run. What matters is the, is the short short run that kills you, right? Um, or determines how you're going to live for the next twenty years. Mm. Um, so I think for that reason, I mean, I've stayed long Bitcoin all through this dip, and it's been painful. I've had to, you know, defend positions, buy puts, manage margin. Um, uh, in one account, I had to put some extra cash in just to keep margin you know at bay temporarily but i didn't want to i didn't want to submit at this time mm. and and mm. reverse position reverse direction because i i feel in my water that um i felt in my water and i've said i'm on record as saying second half of september is going to be when bitcoin starts to to recover um mm -hmm. and i suspect this recovery will now be sort of the trend uh for the time being um the, the, there is one thing niggling at me at the moment, which is that uh, we've just just had a 50 basis point break cut 
in the US, but the markets behaved as if rates went up, oddly, um, or the bond markets behaved as if the 10-year ten, the bond actually went down, i.e. 10-year yields went up in response. Um, whether that was just short-term shifting of durations or, or, or I, I don't know, but that, that kind of implies, just despite dollars getting cheaper, US mortgages and cars getting more expensive, or car loans getting more, more expensive, at least mm. in the short term. And I thought also, interestingly, the yen strengthened. Uh, uh, sorry, weakened. Um, weakened a bit, yeah. Weakened, which, <clears throat> which interested me, because I kind of thought, you know, I don't know, you'd expect and one, you know, lower rates in dollars to be indicative of less, less, uh, less value in the carry trade, but then maybe all that's been, that's all just been hedged in already and uh, priced in. Yeah, and you know, I'm just looking over at like the pound yen and the kiwi yen currency pairs, and I, I didn't. Uh, I've been very busy all morning. I haven't looked, but you're right. Uh, the yen got really weak again, and I, I think I'm going to jump in on some trades, and I'll post those trades for our members. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know whether it's like a short-term deleveraging action mm -hmm. or, or, mm -hmm. or or whether it's you know people just unwinding speculative trades they had just in case rates were higher or lower. You know. Yeah, oil up two percent today too. And just before you carry on, um, you know, and, 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 and everything actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it seems like it too. I, I didn't take a look at the futures this morning, like the S and P. Everything is up. So right now, S and P futures one point and a half, one and a half percent. Nasdaq one hundred two percent. So yeah, uh, it's interesting. ETH up uh, almost three um, percent. Uh, what I was going to say was uh, I, I decided to do a little poll, and you know we're, we're talking about you know a lot of people are expecting what they call a god candle. You know, like where 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 Bitcoin goes from you know sixty eight to. 98 or like 120 or just some outrageous, you know, that people will look back for years and say, can you believe it? I don't think that's off the table. I still think that might happen. And there, and this is that slowly then suddenly there might be some geopolitical events. Everything lines up and there's, there's a big move and then a panic and then bam, it happens. Um, so my question in the poll is, is this it? You know, are we finally going to see the next Bitcoin rally in September, October? Heck yeah, not a chance, and only if Richard shaves off his beard. <laughs> and so far, 50% of the people think that if you shave off your beard, Bitcoin will have a big rally. Is that right? Yep. yep. Yeah, so forget the moon phases, forget uh, you know burnt animal entrails, reading tea leaves, anything else. Really, your beard is the primary <laughs> focus there. Well, I, I'm short a few calls at the minute, so I'll just wait until I've got rid of those, and then I'll... Okay. I'll uh, then you'll... I'll say, um, you I, know, I, I think I remember back in the 80s when ZZ Top, the band, you remember they had the, the long straight beards? They were offered, I think, a million dollars each. You know, I guess back then it was a lot or it was more uh, to shave off their beards by Gillette, but they but they refused. I don't know if that's <laughs> urban legend or if it really happened, but I remember I that. It's, it's okay. Uh, okay, so uh, that's, that's the poll. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there, but is there anything... Um, else you want to mention about about that before we uh no i was just um seeing this um comment by vladimir um about uh, you can own huge company stocks in exchange for gold value in case you want to not hold all your eggs in one basket uh that's kind of true um well my my view on on stocks has changed over the years i i used to just see stocks as a as a barometer of free money or cheap money mm. Um, I still do, by the way. Um, but there are some stocks that are truly valuable. So my, in my view, stocks that produce energy are truly valuable because actually all wealth, all wealth comes from having excess energy. If you look at the, the, you know, the, the, the history of humanity and the standard of living, it, it has absolutely correlated with our ability to harness more and more cheaper or more and more energy full stop. Um, <clears throat> and so by any measure, we are all stupendously rich because there's energy everywhere uh, now. Um, and every other, so, and then you've got things like um, cosmetics and gold. They are valuable uh, for slightly different reasons, but related. So co I think cosmetics and, and luxuries are essentially bartering or uh, attraction tools for mates and sex. And that's always valuable because people, always, uh, humans all, all grad, gra uh, gravitate towards uh, mating rights and mating opportunities. Um, and gold, of course, is used for both mating rights and for um, international stores of value. So that there's there's value there. So 
arguably producers of gold that consume energy to produce gold and companies that produce consume energy to produce um, cosmetics and fashion should be valuable going forward. Um, infrastructure, of course, or necessary, and then almost anything else is just basically worthless and a barometer of how much easy cash there is out there. So that's pretty much all tech, um, which has done super, supremely well over the past, well, couple of decades. But mm. this, in my view, is just, just a, um, a, a symptom of, I mean, tech is basically useless, right? It just makes everyone's life worse. Um, <laughs> and and, uh, uh, and we lap it up. We all buy, buy it. Whatever, with any spare spare credit card you know, uh, allowance we've got, we, we buy more tech. But if we didn't have that credit card allowance, we wouldn't. We wouldn't. You'd buy food and shelter and warmth and mating rights. Um, Maybe what we should do is next week we'll just replay uh, Austin Power Gold Member. Yeah. We'll <laughs> yeah. Teach people about the value of gold. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot, a lot of me things that companies that hold patents on tech are gold value. No, I, I completely disagree because in the end, the Chinese will just copy it and replace you at, at cheaper anyway. And no matter what your view on patent law is, you'll buy the cheaper Chinese crap. Um, and uh, and also, you'll only buy that crap if you've got spare cash. You, you'll, you'll only have spare cash if the, if the Fed are printing money. And when they stop, or when they're no longer able to print, you, you're going to be poor. And the only money you're going to have is in uh, your, your, the house you live in. That, that's actually useful. Any second homes will be liabilities. And the gold bars you bought. Mm. And maybe, right. and maybe the Bitcoin. It depends on how, how bad it gets. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So our uh, our poll, I'll close the poll. 42% of people think that the price of Bitcoin is finally going to have a big rally this September, October. 0% say it's not going to rally. So it was very bullish. But uh, more people, 57%, think that it's more correlated to your beard. So, do you remember, remember you saying back in the, the beginning of the summer when everyone's bullish by by puts? Yes, yes, and uh, you know this morning I bought puts. <laughs> I bought calls too, but yeah, uh, yeah. no, it's uh, yeah, and that's the way Bitcoin goes. And as you said at the beginning of the call, you know, you've we, we, we've been. It was suffering a little bit since August. You having to, you know watching equity go down in accounts that are they're long oriented, long delta, constantly managing uh, short puts. It's a real pain in the in the backside. Mm. Uh, and now we're we're ah we're having to manage calls, right? And that's always the way Bitcoin goes, and mm. and it starts to get stressful. And you, you you pray that you could manage some puts for a while. Quickly, that prayer goes very very wrong very quickly, and um, yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, yeah, because... I'm, I'm short. You're always shorter calls than you wanted to be if, if the market rallies. But I'm, I'm, I'm not as short calls as, as, as I might have been because I just, I was actually willing, willing to run a long delta all through the summer because I just had a feeling, you know. Yeah, and double covering helps too, mm. um, if you want to double cover or more in some cases, especially if uh, you know if, if you see an opportunity where uh, you think that that cover is cheap. Then, then by all means grab it and it's uh, you know the few times that it comes into play it's always worth it so very very important all right so we're almost at the end of our time uh, i will mention too in the chat there there's a, a little link if you want to save 10 percent on deribit fees if you do not have a deribit account and if you're watching this on youtube of course you can just check the link below and save 10% on Deribit tree fees. Uh, any last thoughts here, Richard? Uh, and, and again, if anybody has any questions, please drop it into the Q&A section and we'll get to it. Uh, well, I mean, if you look at the news today, the, the Yahoo Finance front page is just plastered with, you know, um, basically crowing at the Fed for finally towing the line and mm. lowering rates uh, like the market told it it had to, uh, or, you know. Um, and all the stories about, Economic collapse of all, are now all relegated to Twitter, um, uh, so, and you know fears of downside, which is interesting, mm -hmm. right? Because the, the 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 infallible rule is to always sell good news. So, um, uh, I, I I've read a few people who economists who think that there'll be a relief rally, and then followed by a, a reconciliation or a reckoning. Mm -hmm. um, 
and there's a few people who are thinking that the, the S and P could drop by like twenty five percent over the next six months. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I I don't disagree with that. And you know, before the call, I was talking about you know us starting a, a fund like a, like a like a proper hedge fund with, with stocks and using options. Anyways, the, the point is, is I, I remember I was doing my online banking and I saw this little pop up came up and said, hey, you know, invest, you know, here, you know, what's your what's your you know risk tolerance and you know the usual questions. And I was looking at some of the the funds they had and how they're oriented and what what uh, sectors they're in and all that. And I thought, gosh, could you imagine starting to invest right now? It just seems absurd. What the hell would you buy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're asking for for the hammering of a lifetime, you know. I, I, to to me, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the market's going to go up for another three years. I I don't know, but uh, I, you know, we're we're at all time highs or near all time highs in the S P, and uh, the world, everything is crumbling. Um, you know, the United States is a mess. Britain, is, just forget about it. Europe is a joke. Mm -hmm. I I don't know what to say. Uh, and and maybe even going back to Vladimir's point about you know having companies that have tech and you know you you kind of disagree with that. It, now we're seeing rules being bent for political reasons where politics has no goddamn place. And you know when you talk about oh the Chinese will probably copy things, well we all know they do that. Mm. You know a patent is only good as the enforcement behind it. And so oh, I, 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 enforcement, I, 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 great. I very much believe that we're at, we're we're currently at the well um, um, in the US are put, uh, putting trade tariffs now on Chinese cars, aren't they? And um, mm. so are the EU. So trade in, uh, tariffs are sort of stage two in the in the path to war. Um, then the, the next mm. is economic warfare, um, and then after that is kinetic warfare uh, through mm. normally, through, normally through proxies first, and then if it gets really serious between the actual powers. So I, I very much expect us to see many more proxy wars appearing along the cracks between the two empires. Um, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and that's going to, yeah, it's going to make shipping more expensive and therefore insurance and, and goods from overseas. And yeah. And, and I, I was reading a quick little article. So I, I used to, for, for a while I jumped into the Amazon space. Uh, There's a lot of money to be made there and I had some good friends doing it. So I jumped in and I haven't been doing that for many years now. Um, but I saw an article yesterday or maybe the day before talking about how Amazon and uh, you know, maybe Walmart or other big retailers, uh, there's a loophole regarding these trade tariffs uh, if they're sent directly. So basically, you know, your stuff is shipped directly from, from China versus mm -hmm. going to warehousing and all these things. And if it's under a certain value, then it bypasses that. Now, the the thing was new, not so fast. Maybe there's new sets of regulations will deal with that. But I thought, oh my gosh, you know, imagine being a big Amazon seller or or you know, and you've invested millions in warehousing and infrastructure and logistics and insurance and everything else those sellers have to deal with at scale just to have it pulled out, you know, from under your from under your feet by by Amazon and, and who could be loyal to a company like that? Hmm. You know, their their greed is knows no bounds no bounds sorry that's a little rant there we had a quick question from vladimir uh last oh and one more thing i'll mention so someone mentioned on a youtube video a follow-up from last week richard where we talked about uh you know turning your worthless dollars into you know <laughs> bitcoin we were talking yeah. about uh, uh the, the cross currency margin system uh and someone said hey it's not it cash settled. It's settled in BTC. I want to clarify. Yes, it's cash settled, but the currency is BTC. Yeah. Well, so it's just kind of confusing the, the. You could think of it as, as as cash settled in dollars, but before they give you the dollars, they convert them to bitcoins. <laughs> Makes total sense. It's, it's clear as mud, really. So, yeah. Uh, Vladimir has a quick question here. Last week, I asked you which size of positions you think that's reasonable to buy when we're at the bottom of a range. And now I finally realized that what you can actually do, spend 25% of total profits, which you received while we're not around bottom of range. With this strategy, you'll always be long or short just in time. Okay. No, well, maybe uh, Vladimir has found, found an edge here. We'll try. That Vladimir's always thinking. Yeah. You know, I think that uh, maybe he thinks angle, too much. Yeah, he's always looking for an angle. I, no, it's I, good. I, I, that. I mean, that's I the only way you, you find the angles, it's by, by looking. Right? Right. you got to keep poking and poking until yeah. until something gives. So, 
uh, let us know how that goes. Uh, yeah. All right. I think uh, any last questions, please post them. I I, I know. Uh, I think might not the problem is that most. what I've said is is probably everyone on the on the on the call is in agreement with what I've said, so no one has any, <laughs> anything any questions, <laughs> or they disagree with you so vehemently. Yeah, the they just don't even want to start an, start <laughs> yeah. an argument. Yeah, very political. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Well, we have reached the bottom of the hour, anyways. Uh, thanks again for joining us, everyone. Uh, check us out at RogueTrader.academy if you want to hang out with us, uh, sort of from Monday to Friday. Other than that, let's see what happens. Uh, until next week and see if we get that big rally. Maybe next week we'll be up at 68 or 70. Wouldn't that be interesting if we're starting to get near all time highs again, where mm. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would be pretty damn happy. So let's see what happens this week and we will catch you next Thursday.